If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some gamer score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Ah, here we go. Hello, my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Retro, the Mormon entertainer, the most inspirational woman in all of Asia, and welcome to another edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast, your best place for your points, achievements, trophies, and all your news, rumours, and everything in between. So, this week, it is a very tasty, it's a very tasty edition of the, uh, podcast we've got some more fantastic news uh news on the nintendo switch once again interestingly and uh, there's a planet coaster map that works not just as a theme park but also as a playable monopoly game uh we, details of the um latest call of duty game have been revealed according to a couple of reports. Uh, Dead Rising Studio Capcom Vancouver has been hit by layoffs, unfortunately. And uh, we find out what did EA screw up this week. And in the points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting, points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Shadow of the Colossus Remaster came out uh, yesterday because I'm recording this on Thursday as I'm heading away on Friday, so I'll have this up on Friday. Anyway. Anyway, uh, what do we have? What do we have? It is... Excuse me. Uh, let's see. It is... Doo -dee -doo -dee -doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. Trophies. The secret trophies, in fact. Plus, the elusive... Ah! Brains! Ah. That's what I was saying. The secret trophies and the elusive platinum trophy for Shadow of the Colossus Remaster. Now, just before we get into this, as always, a as always, we get a big shout out to our good friends over at Boomerang Rentals, the best place to rent your games. Packages start from as little as three ninety nine a month, and if you sign up today, get a twenty one day free trial, and you get three free rentals on them before your subscription begins. You can keep the games as long as you like or keep them forever at a discounted price from the store. That's boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. And that jingle means what did he screw up this week? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's see what we have. Need for Speed Payback dev, dev response to community complaints says the active player base is healthy. Just try to be excellent to each other. Um, if you're claiming the player base is healthy, explain why they're still complaining about the game. That is what I consider a screw up. So, EA, you screwed up, and therefore it is your screw up of the week. Now, let's see what we. It's a Need for Speed Payback's Nissan 2000, Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR should have rolled out in December's update as part of the new Abandoned Cars feature, but was delayed, well, was delayed due to a bug. <laughs> Proof the game was broken. This wasn't met with much understanding. Why does that not surprise me? And the developers have addressed the community's ire, calling out inappropriate behaviour and responded to claims that the game is dead by assuring fans that the active player base is still still healthy um no it's not they're complaining the game is broken and typical EA you're not willing to admit to your mistakes the global manager of community engagement Ben F8RGE walk <laughs> uh, took to reddit to address the multiple topics the first of the reddit posts is a, is a hefty one and while it recognises players' passion, it goes on to say that there is a line that shouldn't be crossed. And some of the abuse that I've seen hurled around over the last 24 hours or so is shocking. And no wonder the game 
game is broken! Walker wrote at length about the treatment of ghost games by the community at large, saying that he believes that the wider gaming community does have a problem with how people react and communicate at times. Don't get me wrong, the game community is also one full of joy, fun, kindness and friendship. It can be amazing, but at the same time, everyone has their part to do to ensure that, well, people behave like civilized human beings. Um, not when your game is broken, they won't, because they will come to your studio with pitchforks and torches and burn the place to the ground. There's also been loads of misconceptions been thrown around. He added the first of those being that the game is dead, which in the grand scheme of things, it technically is. Full speed payback. How bad is this? How bad are the sales exactly? <laughs> 5.9 out of 10. <laughs> Even IGN, even IGN, I mean, we got three out of five from Microsoft. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, reception. How bad is it? GameSpot, five out of ten. IGN, 5.9 out of ten. Polygon, 6.5 out of ten. EGM, four out of ten. <sighs> Mixed or average views. Uh, Luke Riley from the praised it for repairing the problems but criticized its scripted story like a police chases during free roam scripted police chases loot box like mechanisms yay more loot box scandals ea never learning poor car handling broken unrealistic car damage broken and several other issues which made the game broken pc world criticized the game for being full of microtransactions Proving the game is broken and severely limited customizability of cars, gameplay mechanics, and a lack of cockpit view, and several more issues. Even even goes so far as to compare it harshly to the Forza Horizon series. And the Forza Horizon series is actually really good. Oh, EA's new need for speed payback looks very fast and fairly furious. <laughs> I guarantee EA paid them to say that. And look at this on Metacritic on PC 61, PS4 60, Xbox One 61. Terrible. Typical EA rubbish. That's just proof they don't care about their customers. And not just that. They only care about the moonies. And if that's not a sign that the game, if that's not a sign that it's broken, I don't know what is. What are the sales like anyway? What are the sales like? Sales figures. How bad is it? 462,000 units in the first week. Mm. Majority of them were sold on PS4. That was surprising one. Um. And it's down. It's down from the last entry. And you still claim the fan base is healthy? I don't think so. He continued by explaining that announcements are made when the team is able to talk freely on those topics, <laughs> if they can be bothered. And while dates are subject to change, players are not being ignored. Um, yes, they are. You don't care about it, but about yourself. Oh dear. Right. However, Walk does admit that communication is an area that I feel we will always be looking to improve. Um, by actually communicating with your customers and fan base? Ay, 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 ay. It is, however, important to note that communication does flow both ways. If we pop our heads up from within the trenches and you see nothing but gunfire, you're going to quickly duck back down. 
cowards. Probably a bit of an extreme analogy, but you should get my point. <laughs> we get your point that you're absolute cowards and you'll never own up to your mistakes. Touching on the subject of the delayed Nissan Skyline, he said, to clarify, I said it in another post. But yes, we should have continued speaking about the Skyline earlier to ease expectations. Would it, would it have solved the problem? Most likely not. How about, of course it wouldn't, because we are EA and we never admit to our mistakes. I still feel we would get the same level of abuse, shouting and rage. Moving forward, we'll do our best to ensure this doesn't happen again. Ha! <laughs> yeah, right. We're also looking at ways we can communicate and interact with our community. No, you're not. I don't have anything else to share on that yet. <laughs> That's why you don't have anything to share on it because you don't have the system to begin with. But it is something that's been worked on. No, it's not. You only care about money. Walk conceded that the ghost team recognizes the community isn't happy. Oh, oh, now you admit to your mistakes. <laughs> Halfway through the article. And are working towards a resolution. But for now, he has asked that the community behave respectfully when giving feedback. Um, how about just admitting you suck? And actually fix the problems? And actually give us a proper game for once? That isn't broken? And that doesn't have loot boxes? And then you and then you guys wonder why I hate the business practices of EA? Because of garbage like this. Anyway. To continue. Uh, yes, the skyline got moved. Yes, it'll arrive when the next update arrives. <laughs> Whenever that's gonna be. The next update is due soon. Um, how soon? Details, clowns, they are important! He wrote, despite trying to open a reasonable and measured disclosure, some community members felt justified in their behaviour. Exactly! Because you fail at life! How to avoid getting... How to avoid... How to avoid to get in some... Seriously? Are you making any, are you even making any sense here? How to avoid getting insulted? Rule number one: Don't betray people by pr by promoting things which aren't included in the product on release date when when people buy the full price. Read one reply. <laughs> oh, there's back. Oh, there's piece of backlash number one. Walk waded back in a few hours later to say we don't want hugs, and this post was not made to garner sympathy. No, it was made to oh, it was made to expose you for the frauds you are. I just wanted to raise awareness about some of the topics that I covered. I don't think abuse and the manner in which people give feedback is something that can be worked on. But then this isn't just relative to relevant to Need for Speed. It's a gaming wide issue. In particular with electronic clowns. Electronic arts. <laughs> Following the Battlefront 2 backlash, oh, I was wondering when they'd get to that. Need for Speed's payback progression, Need for Speed payback's progression system was altered, and a number of changes have already been implemented, thanks to constructive player feedback. Um, how about... No, that wouldn't be appropriate for Super Family Friendly. How about exposing your flaws and forcing you to make the changes? How about that? How about that instead? How about they expose you for the frauds you are and force you to make the games the way they want to make them, not how EA want them. Then you'll get good sales and then and then you'll be able to resurrect Mass Effect then you'll be able to resur re resurrect Mass Effect in the way the fans want. In other words, have these games fan made and get rid of EA forever all together now never to be seen again <sighs> he stressed that they don't want 100% fall in line or in only positive people <sighs> and they and EA paid him to say that typical but it's how that feedback is given that is critical. Um, take all feedback on board 
and admit you fail at making games. After all, we can't read minds, and even this sucks doesn't leave us much to work with. Um, technically it does. They'd rather keep it simple, and yet you still cannot understand what they mean. <sighs> Hardly surprising how bad EA have become. Six years on from the debacle that was Mass Effect 3, and nothing's changed. It doesn't get any better, but we've, we've just had some more layoffs, thankfully not from an EA studio. But the masters of on-disc DLC which you have to pay for. And an arcade edition of a game that should have had that should have been arcade to begin with. <coughs> <sighs> Capcom Vancouver. Oh, poor Dead Rising. Capcom Vancouver, the studio best known for its work on the Dead Rising series, has been hit by a wave of layoffs. The company has confirmed to GameSpot. This reportedly coincides with the cancellation of an unannounced game, or Dead Rising itself has not been axed. Capcom Vancouver has undergone a restructure which has impacted approximately 30% of the studio as part of its regular periodic assessment of upcoming projects and overall studio goals. A Capcom spokesperson tells GameSpot this follows a report by Kotaku saying that a significant number of staff had been laid off, an unannounced project cancelled, and the scope of the next de Dead Rising scaled back. Capcom did not address the reported cancellation or any changes to Dead Rising, Though some now ex-Vancouver staffers have acknowledged the layoffs on Twitter, including community manager Jeffrey Simpson. The community manager got axed? The company does say that it will continue to support continue support for both Dead Rising and the mobile adaptation adaption adaptation yeah, of Puzzle Fighter released last year. The team is continuing to work hard to support the recent release of Puzzle Fighter Mobile and is dedicated to its flagship Dead Rising series. Capcom's statement concludes it has not yet officially announced a new Dead Rising game. Capcom Vancouver is the former is the former Blue Castle Games is the former Blue Castle Games whose earlier games include the Bigs series of arcade style MLB games. Capcom acquired the studio in 2010 and renamed it following its work on Dead Rising 2 and its spin-offs. Since then it's developed Dead Rising 3 and Dead Rising 4 in addition to the aforementioned Puzzle Fighter game. The original Dead Rising was developed by one of Capcom's Japanese studios. Makes sense. Dead Rising 4 originally released as an Xbox One and PC exclusive in 2016 before finally making it to PS4 this past December. Following its original launch, Capcom said Dead Rising 4 underperformed and acknowledged the more approachable nature of the game was not well received by some players. The game was also criticised for its multiplayer support, which abandoned the cooperative campaign of the previous game in favour of a standalone mode. See? That's... That's how you deal with feedback, EA. That's how you deal with feedback. No, seriously, that is a real shame. Still haven't completed the first Dead Rising game yet. Ugh, tough as nails. Anyway, let's get on to a more lighter subject, shall we? And we've got a planet coaster map that is both playable as a working theme park and a playable monopoly game. What's about that? Game pieces, working dice, house and hotel, houses and hotels, and even chance cards are built right in. Nice. If you've, if you've ever found yourself asking whether you should spend a night either building a theme park or playing a game of monopoly, I've got two pieces of news. First, that's a really weird question to ask yourself, and second, you no longer need to ask it. 
Mother Chance has devised an exceedingly clever Planet Coaster Park on a giant Monopoly game board. And it's not just for looks. It's an actual function in mono Monopoly game scenario with custom rules you can play while you build your park. The park already has an entrance and some rides and shops built in the center. After downloading it from the Steam Workshop and loading it up, I saw the guests were already arriving. The giant Monopoly game pieces, top hat, battleship, ironing board, etc. Oh no, it's just the iron. It's just the iron. It's not the ironing board. Unless it's the American version. Are clustered on the starting school. Just select your piece and roll the dice. Yep, there's working dice too. They are housed in a giant box that looks like a die at the corn. That looks like a die at the corners of the board. You activate it. The top of the die opens, and your dice rolls. And your dice rolls are generated and displayed inside. It's really cool. When you land on a square by moving the game piece, complete the challenge listed there. It might be some. It might be something like start a marketing campaign or build a bundle of balloons in front of every loony balloons shop, or to build and connect a new ride. When you've completed the task, you can place a star coin all some movable objects on the design spots on the game square. So, so you move around the board and complete challenges and along the way you're building up your theme park. You win by achieving all star coin challenges, paying off your debts and earning all the houses and hotels. Yes, there are houses and hotels. There are even chance cards. They're cleverly hidden under the chance squares. So when you land on one, you can pull one out and then discard it when you've completed the instructions. There is, of course, a get out of jail free card. The park, the map, and the game within the game are all really cleverly imagined and executed. And you forget if you forget the rules, no worries. They're posted in the park itself. So you can find this amazing Monopoly park in Planet Coaster's Steam Workshop. I've also embedded a trailer that shows off the park below. Hmm. I'll definitely check that out at some point. Anyway. Well, how's about that? Monopoly in Planet Coaster. <laughs> that I can get behind. I can definitely get behind that. Now. Next up. Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch Games News. Shock new Wii U stat proves why Switch is number one. Ooh. And Bandai Namco reportedly starts on two exclusive games. Hmm. Okay. A new Nintendo Switch game stat has proven why the console is so far ahead of the Wii U. A report carried out by Gizmodo shows that on, not only does the Nintendo Switch have more games than the Wii U, but the releases are of a higher quality. After 297 day, days on sale, the Nintendo Switch had a library of nearly 200 games. That's compared to around 60 for the Wii U during the same 297 day, day time period. In fact, it would take the Wii U nearly two and a half years to reach that number. Perhaps even more encouraging is that the Switch games appear to be of a higher, higher quality. In just nine months, Nintendo Switch have already the Nintendo Switch has already has around 45 games that have scored 80% 80 or higher on Metacritic. Two of them being two huge Game of the Year contenders in the form of Super Mario Odyssey and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In its entire run, the Wii U only has around 50 games with a score of 80% or more, which means the Switch is on course to overtake it soon. Hardly surprising. And it sounds like Bandai Namco is working on a couple of high-profile Nintendo Switch exclusives as well. According to, the link, according to the LinkedIn profile of a Bandai Namco developer, the company's Singapore studio is working on Metroid Prime 4. 
Bandai Namco are taking care of Metro Prime, Metro, Metroid Prime 4. And, ooh, am I reading this correctly? Yeah. They're also going to be making a new Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer 8 to be exact. Even better is that Ridge Racer 8 is said to be exclusive to Nintendo Switch. Okay, I'm sold. I'm definitely getting a Nintendo Switch. I'm definitely getting a Nintendo Switch. Bandai Namco is yet to make any official announcement, but the series is certainly due a comeback, having last appeared back in 2012 with Ridge Racer 7, I believe. Ridge Racer 7. No, that was way back in 2000. What? Ridge Racer 7 was 2006? What was released in 2012 then? What on earth? I said, what could have possibly released in 2012? Okay, here we go. Oh, Ridge Racer Unbounded. Hmm. Oh, that's the last major console game. Hmm. I don't know about that. What about that? Who'd have thought? Wow. Bandai Namco is yet to make any official announcement, but the series is certainly due a comeback. Da, 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 da. I've already read that part. Other reports suggest that. No freaking way! Other reports suggest that Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy could make its way into Nintendo Switch as well. A European license manual suggests that a new entry in the Crash Bandicoot franchise is in development for a 2019 release. Woohoo! It also says a port of the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is in the works for the Nintendo Switch and PC. Rumours even suggest that the Crash Bandicoot port will be released this year. Well, take my money! Right. And our last piece of news is regarding the... B it's regarding the biggest infection in all of the gaming industry, the biggest plague known as Call for Money Recycled Warfare. And it's Call of Duty time. As always, Activision will release a new entry in the Call of Duty series this year. Rather surprising. And, all de and although details are scant on exactly what to expect, a new report states that it will be the latest entry in the Black Ops subseries, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Oh, good grief. He might as well have it. He might as well have it as his own franchise at some point. At this point, mm -hmm. following a recent tweet from games writer Marcus Sellers, saying as much, you saying as much, saying as much, you again reports that multiple sources have confirmed Black Ops Four is indeed this year's Call of Duty title. The game is being developed by Treyarch, which has been responsible for the previous Black Ops titles. It will also reportedly have fewer sci-fi elements following the reception to 2016's futuristic Infinite Warfare. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. oh boy. That we're seeing that we're seeing another Black Ops game. That we're seeing that we're, that we're seeing that we're seeing another Black Ops game is a little surprise. Is a little surprise. The Black Ops series has proven to be the most popular of the various recurring Call of Duty brands and has represented the bulk of developer Treyarch's output over the past eight years. The timing also makes sense. Black Ops 3 was released in 2015, so the inevitable fall 2018 release would come after three years. Activision shifted to a three-year development cycle for Call of Duty games rotated between Treyarch, Sledgehammer and Infinity Ward. Uh, Sledgehammer games did World War II. The new Call of Duty games traditionally aren't announced until well into the spring, 
So it could easily be two or more months before we hear anything official from Activision. The company reports its earnings for the final quarter of 2017 later this week. We'll report back with anything it has to share then. Hmm. And guess what? I don't care! Now, anyway, it is on to... Hmm, it's a relatively short... Yeah, it's a relatively short one. Anyway, it's now time to go into the signature part. It's now time to go into my favorite part of the show, and it goes, well, one of my favorite parts of the show, next to the EA screw up of the week, and it goes a little something like. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting, points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. And today, in honor of the Shadow of the Colossus remaster, I am going to be covering the Shadow of the Colossus remasters, secret trophies, and of course, the elusive platinum trophy! So let's go through the secret achievements. From bronze, to platinum. The bronze trophies are as follows. For the secret trophies, of course. Last of the Colossus. Defeat the 16th Colossus. Trick arrow skills. Shoot a lizard with a special arrow. Boon of the Nomad. Find barrel in hidden cave. Annals of the Lands. Interact with a dove, hawk, fish, and turtle. Skilled warrior. Defeat a Colossus with a downward jump step. Paint the target. Use the sword to focus on a vital point. And the last bronze secret trophy, Sword of Her Majesty. Defeat any Colossus with Queen Sword. This sounds like it could be a relatively easy game to platinum. Fruit of the Garden is the first of our secret silver trophies. Taste the poisoned fruit. Dorman's Rage. Use Dorman's Breath Attack. Last Man Standing. Complete a single playthrough without dying once. Reach the gate, cross the bridge to the entrance of the Forbidden Lands. And the gold secret trophies are Resist the Wrist. Defeat Colossus 3 without breaking his wrist guard. And Grounded Scale. Defeat Colossus 8 before it can turn back over. And then, of course, the elusive Platinum Trophy! The Horned Boy, which is basically acquire all trophies. 38 trophies in all, and that makes... Now, how do I go about... How do I kill them? Okay, look. Bronze uh, I don't have time for that. we go. Yes, that, that's how many of each trophy there are. And of course, the elusive platinum trophy. Anyway, a relatively short uh, edition of the podcast today, because, uh, like I said, I'm I'm in Coventry this weekend, so uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be bu- I'm gonna be busy until I'm, I'm gonna be busy until uh, I get back on Sunday night, and I will be. I'll uh, also be um. I'm sorry. I'll be getting the music covers up and running on Monday as well. So, thanks for watching today, folks. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to continue keeping up to date with what I do on my channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom and make sure to click the bell to turn on all notifications so you don't miss anything I do on my channel. Uh, On the left, you've got my previous video, which was Pac-Man World. 
Let's go back to LCC yesterday. That second boss was a nightmare, as you'll see. And of course, on the left, right, you've got my Trophy Achievement Podcast reboot playlist. So, I will see you guys very soon. Have a fantastic day. Peace out. And stay faithful.